All right, so this is slide 54. And um, again, I said that we're gonna be looking at density, um, but we're gonna kind of look at it through the thermal energy lens. The reason that we're talking density is because we're talking volume, and we know that that's one of our variables in the density equation. So, when you add thermal energy, also known as heat, to a solid, liquid, or gas, the volume is usually going to increase because the space between those molecules is spreading out. So if the space between the molecules is spreading out, then that means the volume um, or the space that they're taking up is also going to increase. So again, try not to memorize any of this stuff. Like just kind of think about it logically. Think about what you know, kind of apply it, and then you don't have to try to memorize this stuff because it can get easy to confuse. Oh, hold that thought. Hello? Okay, all right, thank you. Uh huh. And Selena just showed up. Uh huh. Sorry. A little late there. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll talk about that later. If, just so you guys know, Owen did go home sick. Okay, so somebody else asked in your other classes. Okay. So the reason why is our, our kind of major theme of this unit, as temperature goes up, so does kinetic. And you guys did a really good job on the cahoots and game pitch yesterday, kind of showing that you understand that idea. And so obviously the up arrow means increase. If you feel comfortable and you understand that when you look back at that, it means increase, then go ahead. You can just draw the up arrow too. If you want to write it in, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but with more kinetic energy, the particles are going to move around more. They have more space between them, um, causing the spaces that they occupy to also increase, meaning their volume increases. So as temperature goes up, kinetic goes up, and now volume goes up. All right, so all three of those things are directly related. So what's going to happen to the volume if the kinetic energy goes down? So as you go from a gas, and those molecules get closer together to form the liquid. What do you think is going to happen to the volume? Chances are it would also decrease. Right? That's kind of the logical next step. Reasoning. With less kinetic energy, the particles are moving less, and they would have less space between them. And that would mean that the space between the molecules and the space that they're taking up total is also going to decrease, meaning the volume would decrease. Not a hard concept, right? All right, so the density equation, mass divided by volume. This is our very first equation, and you guys did very, very well with it. We're going to get to a bunch more equations here really soon in our next couple units. Actually, a lot throughout the next um, the rest of the year. Um, so you guys have a really good foundation of how to go about solving these simple um, equations and formulas, or using the formula. All right, mass divided by volume. So when you're heating or cooling something, um, the mass is not changing, but the volume is. So the mass stays constant. It's the volume that changes. So if you change the volume, that's one of our variables, you're also changing the density. Changing the volume changes our density. So kind of by default, heating or cooling will change density. Still with me? Okay, so here's what it looks like in a gas a liquid, and a solid, and these are obviously our molecules. Notice that the molecules themselves, those aren't changing, it's just the space between them that changes. You guys recognize very easily now that a gas has lots of space, liquid a little bit of space between them, and then a solid, they're really tightly packed, they're pretty rigid, um, they have that set kind of structure. Less dense to more dense. Still pretty basic, right? So we can use a slope just like we did before. So I told you back when we did the density unit, hey, you don't have to be an expert with slope just yet. Um, you guys are really good with the equation. You had a little bit more trouble um, kind of interpreting and understanding how the slope played in. 
Um, but you're going to get some more practice with it now and um, in a couple units in the future too. So here's another opportunity to kind of practice that slope. So who remembers the slope formula? What is it? <laughs> what over what? Rise over run. Way to nail it there. Good job, Dylan. Rise over run. Okay. We said that you could take your two y coordinates and subtract them, and you know that's your rise. And then you could take your two x coordinates, your run, and subtract them. And I had let you know, like I really don't care how you go about um, figuring up the slope. People have different ways that they're familiar and comfortable with. And at the time, you guys, a lot of you were doing slope in algebra, right? Um, so. I don't have to be as picky as your math teachers because this is science. As long as you can accurately get the slope, you're good, right? I don't care how you go about it. Um, so, oops, let me, I need to change something real quick. I got, I need to draw, I need to change my settings. I can do that. Um, so, I think that the, let me do it up here. I think the easiest way um, is to pick two points on your line that cross the grid line. And then once they're crossing the grid line, you can rise up from one point and go to the height of the second point. And then you can run over. And so I'll show you how that looks. All right. Notice our variables. We still have mass as our rise and volume as our run. Is this dealing with a liquid or a solid based on those units? Who thinks that this is dealing with a liquid? Who thinks it's dealing with a solid? Oh, you guys learn and remember so well. Because of the centimeter cube, what would you have to have for it to be a liquid? What would indicate that you're dealing with a liquid? No Good, so some version of the liter. Remember liter liquid? So if you don't see any version of the liter, then you know that you're dealing with um, a solid. So our units for mass are gonna be grams. So we can find the slope of this. Um, this one just so happens where the points actually do cross grid lines. On a couple of things, like the points that they had were like this. You don't have to use those points. You can use the points um, that you make yourself that cross those grid lines. Okay, so you can pick any two. So if we pick like this one and this one, okay? So from here, I'm going to rise up until I reach the height of my second point. From this arrow, I'm going to, because it's the same as this dot, right? I'm going to run over until I reach that dot. So now I go one, two, three, four up, and I go one, two, three, four over. But is each space worth one? No. So we say no. What is each space worth? So that's the first thing you have to figure out. Ten. Let's try ten. So if I go fifty, sixty, ooh, did I reach? How about seventy? 20? Let's try twenty. Um, so I go fifty, I go seventy, and I go ninety. Ooh, we're getting closer. 30. 30. Try thirty. Let's try 30 and see if that's right. So if I go 50 to 80, ooh, to 110. So we're really close. Try 25. If I go 50, 75, 100. All right, so that does get me. Here's the way you can do it. If you take the difference between two of your given numbers, 100 minus 50 is 50. And then that 50 grams is broken up into two spaces. Right? And so that's one way you can get the, the, what each space is worth. So before you can do anything, you have to know what each space is worth. So if I go up one, two, three, four spaces, it's really like I went up um, 25, 50, 75, 100. So my change in my Y was 50 grams. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with our X. So let's look down here. I go from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, but I have two spaces in between. So what's each space going to be worth? What looks good? Let's try five. So I go 10, 15, 20. Good. 
The other way to do it is if you take two of your given numbers, 20 minus 10, you get 10. 10 divided by our two spaces gives us 5. Okay, so if I go 5, 10, 15, 20, my change in x was 20. The other way that you can go about this is you could take, um, you did 150 and you did 50, right? So if you subtract those, like putting those in as your y's, you have 150 minus 50. If you do the same thing down here, that's where it crossed the x, and this is where it crossed the x, you get 30 minus 10. And so if you would simplify this, you end up with 50 over 20, which is exactly what you got over there. Yeah, I have something wrong? You did 150 minus 50, and your answer was 50. 15. 15. Thank you. That would be 100. And then you're changing y equal 50 instead of 100. Uh -huh. Good catch. I did that on purpose. Good catch. Oh, gosh. this is really ugly. Let's go down here. 100, and then we have over 20. So what do I do over here? Why changing y at the top is at 50. Yeah. It shouldn't be 50. So we have 25, 50, 75, 100. Goodness gracious. Good catch. Sorry about that. Whew. All right. So, I made better math anyways. If we want to simplify this now, what is 100 over 20? I better let you guys do it. 10 over 2. Okay, and so if we do 10, what's 10 divided by 2? Okay, so if we go ahead and finish <coughs> that division out, we have a slope of 5, and we also have a slope of 5 here. Do we need any units for slope? Do we need units for slope? Yes, it's... Uh, grams over centimeter cube. Okay, I agree with you for density, right? So if the question was asking density, you would do exactly what Kay did. He looked at the units for gram or for mass, and he looked at the units for volume, and he, whatever you do to your numbers, you do to your units. So he has grams divided by centimeters cubed for density. But if you're dealing with just slope, it's the only thing we're ever going to deal with that does not need to have some kind of a unit with it. So the slope would just be 5. The density would be 5 grams per centimeters cubed. So is this all ringing a bell? A little bit? Yes? Can't you also get like your answer by like dividing 150 by 30 and that's fine? In this problem, you can. Because it's... The, the way that the, it's set up, but it won't, that won't always work. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't always hold true. Is that right? Okay. Um, all right, so here's another one. You can see these dots are not right on the grid line. And so that threw some of you, you're like, well, I have to use those points, and then you're like making up, okay, like maybe this is 21, and maybe this is... I don't know, like 40, don't use the points unless they cross the grid line. If you need to, put your own points in. All right, so we'll put our own. Um, so like if you go cross in there and they cross there. So from this dot, I'm going to go up until I reach the height of my second dot. So I rose up. Here I'm going to run over. All right, and... What's each space worth? Yeah, we didn't have to really do any figuring here. They're um, going up by 25s each space. All right, so let's see if I can get this right a little bit better this time. So if my change in y over my change in x, and remember this delta symbol means change in. So when I do this, um, my change in y, I go 25 up to 75. That's a change in 50. Right? Yes. Okay. And then my change in x, I go 25 to 50 to 75. So again, that looks like a change in 50. So my slope is going to be 1. Right? The other way you could do it, if you take 75 here and 25 and subtract them, and if you take 25 and 75 here, and subtract them, simplify that down to one. 
okay? All right, so I used to do this, um, we would do this lab or kind of experiment together where we would fill a balloon here in room temperature and then um, it always worked out that it was winter time. So um, a, the very first year I did it, it was like zero degrees out. Like it was super cold. Like there wasn't wind chill, so that's why we were here, but it was like so cold that like, you know, zero, right at below zero, um, real field temperatures or normal temperatures. So we'd fill the balloon in this hot 70 degree room. We'd find the um, circumference, the biggest part of the balloon, and then we would take it outside and let it sit in like one of my crates so that it wouldn't float away like we put it upside down. And so we would let it sit there all period and it would get really cold, right? And then we'd bring it in and we'd measure the circumference again, right? And so we would do that and the first year we got really good results. The second year it wasn't quite as cold and we didn't get as good of results. So I'm gonna kind of cheat and show you um, a video um, that these girls did to kind of show what happens to the space that those air molecules are taking up when something is warm versus when some when they, the temperature is cold. So we're gonna watch this. Um, it was more dramatic and exciting when we did it in class together, but it just we kept we quit getting good results.